Hello everybody, it's the doctor again coming at you with something again a little bit different than I usually do on my channel. Uh, the first thing I did that was just a little bit different was my review of the Batman vs. Superman movie you can watch in the link below. And I thought I would also add to that by doing a review of another this time TV show. A, uh, an episode of a TV show that aired recently that I would like to put my opinions out there uh, about. And of course, many other people have also put their opinions and reviews of this episode already out there. And I just want to put mine out there too. Maybe somebody will listen. Maybe somebody will agree or disagree with me. Whatever. I'm just doing this for fun, putting my opinion out there. Uh, one day, these kinds of reaction or review videos uh, may end up on their own channel. I may spread out and do something interesting like that. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. I'm just trying this out. Hey, it's new for me. Uh, anyway, uh, this is going to be about the Supergirl slash Flash crossover episode. This is episode number 18 of Supergirl, uh, season 1, episode 18 called World's Finest. I will be talking about spoilers in this episode or in this video. So heads up, straight up, there are spoilers. I will be talking about them. So from here on out, uh, if you don't want to hear about it or you haven't seen the episode yet, then turn this video off. Uh, the rest is on you. Um, okay, so basically, uh, I'll try to make this a bit shorter than I did my Batman versus Superman review. I had a lot of opinions about that movie, uh, but I'm going to try to make this a little shorter and a little more to the point so you don't have to sit through a whole 40 minute long video. Um, first of all, I'll just preface by saying that I do enjoy and I do watch all of the DC comic TV shows that are currently on TV. So I watch Supergirl uh, every Monday and I watch The Flash every Tuesday. So I'm very familiar with every episode and what's going on. I do not miss an episode. I also, of course, watch uh, Arrow, and I do watch uh, Legends of Tomorrow, and I even watch iZombie. So I watch it all. Uh, I'm very familiar with what's going on in that world. So the first thing I want to say about this episode is that everybody was looking forward to this. Uh, it's entitled World's Finest because I believe that's an actual comic. Uh, a Supergirl comic. Um, this is a huge thing. Um, it is something that everybody was looking forward to, even if you, even if you were not a fan of Supergirl, the TV show, which I can understand. There's probably a lot of people that don't like that show for some valid reasons, uh, or people that don't watch The Flash uh, or the other shows. There was, this is still one of those things, just kind of like the Batman versus Superman movie, that people just wanted to see. They were looking forward to Supergirl and The Flash being on the screen at once. This is like a huge deal. It's a network crossover that you very rarely see. This is CBS versus the CW, a network crossover which is not common. So the fact that they were able to make this happen within short time is very positive for the future of television and I hope that others uh, that this leads a precedent where we start to see more crossovers from other networks I think that would be incredible I mean why not if the people want to see it and it brings in the views then I say go for it so anyway this was a very uh, again hyped up episode a very uh, a very kind of well-known type of thing that people wanted to see so there was some hype going into it now here's my overall uh, review of it I feel that this uh, episode, in a nutshell, pretty much like the Batman vs. Superman movie, had the potential for pure epicness, but they just didn't go far enough. The execution was lacking. And because of that lack of execution, the epic, quote, epic, wasn't quite um, exploited well enough. The potential was there, could have been epic, wasn't epic. First, I'm going to go over my reasons why I believe it wasn't epic or what could have made it epic, and then I'll go over the things I did like about it. So the number one thing I didn't like about this episode, and this is just me, maybe others will disagree, I didn't like all the lovey-dovey stuff in it. 
I get why it was in there. This is part of previous Supergirl episodes, and they were just following through on that. Problem I have with that is this episode should have solely focused on the Flash and Supergirl. They should have left that lovey-dovey stuff for another episode, for the next one. This one should have focused on the Flash versus Supergirl. It should have been nothing but a fun, humorous, lighthearted episode. Now, it had humor in it. It had lightheartedness. It was fun, but it should have been throughout the entire episode. They should have cut out the parts about the lovey-dovey stuff with Supergirl and Jimmy. They should have cut that stuff out, okay? Now, what they could have done in replace of those scenes, that lovey-dovey stuff, is that's where they could have given us more Supergirl and The Flash together, or Kara and Barry together. That's where they could have had more exposition with them together, uh, more plot points or things could be talked about, like Barry could have, you know, told Supergirl about everything that goes on in his world, on his Earth. And then Supergirl could have told Barry everything that's going on on her Earth. And they could have compared notes. And then Supergirl would be aware of Zoom. Supergirl would be aware of all these other threats in these other worlds that are out there. And at the same time, Barry would know that there are these Kryptonians out there. And maybe they even exist in his universe and they're just not aware of them yet or whatever. You know, they should have had more talk about that, about comparing worlds and just more exposition overall, and that could have filled those spots where all the lovey-dovey stuff was. Take the lovey-dovey stuff out, put in the exposition between Supergirl and The Flash. That, in my opinion, would have brought more focus to the episode, because that's what it should have been focused on. Uh, Number three, because that was my number one and number two points. Number three, the superheroes should have won the battle at the end of this episode, and they didn't. What ended up happening was it was the people that won. The firemen used a fire hose to take out a live wire, which then um, had a secondary shock that went to Silver Banshee. Um, and and the whole episode was kind of about Ke- uh, Kira, Kara, Kara? Yeah, Kara. Uh, redeeming herself to the people. Now, that should have also been saved for the next episode because it looks like they ended this with a cliffhanger about what's what's happening with Myriad, which is really cool stuff, but that could have been where Supergirl comes in and saves the people and then they realize that she is a superhero and all that junk. They should have saved that for the next episode and instead we should have had our two superheroes here win the battle. Because what that would do is that would make us, the audience, feel like, wow, these two together really are B.A. You know, they really are awesome together. They solved the problem. They they won the day. They are superheroes. And then the people of, of Kara's world would see that she is a superhero, that she does save the world. Uh, so in that, they would still see that. They would still get that same message. Uh, and then we, the audience, would feel great because we would be like, yes, Here's our two, you know, wonderful superheroes coming together, and they did it. They saved the world. You know, it would make us feel good. So I think that the C- the superhero should have won uh, at the end of this one and not, uh, not the people. Because if you actually look at it, they actually lost both battles. They lost the first battle with Banshee and Livewire, and then they lost the second battle at the end. And it was the firemen who saved them. So they actually, our superheroes in this one actually lost uh, both battles. That is not what we as the audience want to see. We don't want to see our superhero losing. Uh, This should have been a fun, lighthearted episode just to make us feel good as the audience and to make us want to watch it. And we did want to watch it. But then when our superheroes fail and they don't actually, you know, win or do anything... Um, we feel uh, disappointed by that. You know, we wanted to see them win. We wanted to see them overcome the great difficulty or challenge they have to overcome and win the battle at the end. So the superhero should have won. Uh, Moving on, the next one, um, the race at the end. Oh my gosh, this should have been a real race. Uh, I have a lot of problems with this. First of all, it was too short. Second of all, um, 
they didn't really race to see who was going to win. That's what we want to see. We want to see the Flash and Supergirl running side by side with the goal of who runs faster. And they didn't really weren't really concerned about that and I think that's where they messed up here this should have been a real race number one the race should have gone on longer number two it should have been like a race where they were like running around the world for example that would be long enough to show for a race and what they should have done this is my opinion but check this out if you guys don't think this is awesome what I'm about to say then I don't know but here's what they should have done listen carefully to what I'm saying they should have started running side by side together really fast obviously looking at each other side by side just like they did in that one scene but then now stay with me here then supergirl starts to edge out the flash like actually start running faster than the flash hold on with me stay with me here starts running ahead of the flash looks backward at the flash and the flash should look at supergirl and then wink and then all of a sudden there should be a surge in the speed force and the flash should just zoom past her at even more double the speed. You know what I'm saying? They're already running at supersonic speeds or whatever, but then he just gets a surge of speed force and just zooms past her um, like double speed. Uh, pretty much like they did in the Smallville episode. If you recall, Clark versus... Um, who was it then it was kid flash wasn't it um was it bart allen yeah i think it was bart allen kid flash they had at, they did a race scene there at the end and what ended up happening is they were running side by side for a while and then all of a sudden at the end the flash just took off just like 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 he wasn't even trying it was, it started running backwards he was running so fast he was like running even running backwards and like giving uh, giving clark a face you know that's how this should have been they should have started running side by side and then and then supergirl starts pulling out ahead and the flash is like nope i'm actually faster and then all of a sudden the speed force surge he zooms past her and uh, then that's what creates the um the vortex or whatever and then he goes home pops through it because he's going so fast that's how that race should have gone it would have been epic we would have got what we wanted to see which is the flash winning versus supergirl um but it would have been so satisfying so much more satisfying and it would have given a reason for the uh, vortex to another world to open because he would have been going so much faster than he normally does at that point so that would have been fast enough to open that portal and uh, then supergirl would have stopped and been like whoa <laughs> you know that would have just been incredible that would have been the way they should have done the race so i'm a little let down with how they ended up doing the race in the first place um, uh, the last point I want to make here is uh, I don't like how they depowered Supergirl in this episode. Um, while I can understand Banshee's scream hurting her ears because she has, you know, very sensitive hearing, obviously, I can't understand the force of the scream, like pushing her into things and like causing her harm. She's 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 like the woman of steel or should be the woman of steel that should not impact her. She should be able to stand up to those forces. Uh, you know, even if it hurt her ears and made her bleed, it would still she should still have the strength to stand up to that. Also, I don't understand how Banshee punched her and like, you know, took her out punching her to the ground and actually did damage to her to where the people have to come over and and, and say no don't don't get her or whatever I, I don't i don't understand how banshee silver banshee was so powerful with that punch uh you you, you guys know the one i'm talking about i mean suit this is supergirl she she should be able to take a punch her she should be like she wasn't affected by kryptonite or anything in this one she should be just you know like hitting a a, a, a steel pole um, also, um, yeah, it just seemed overall that she was a little depowered. And now when she got struck by the, the electricity from Livewire, that was a cool scene at the helicopter. Uh, problem was, I again, I have a problem with how much it hurt her. It made her fall all the way to the ground. And then the people had to come around her and, like, save her. And, you know, that's, no, she should be more powerful than that. She should be able to take a lightning strike, a electricity strike, or whatever, 
you know, be electrocuted and be okay about it. She should be more powerful it's because she has grown up on Earth. Remember, she was left off as like a 14-year-old or whatever on Earth or a 12-year-old or whatever it was. But the rest of the time now, and I don't know how old she's supposed to be in the in this series, but I'm guessing in her 20s, you know, she spent, you know, f- t- 10, 15 more years on Earth under the yellow sun. So she's had a long time to absorb that yellow sunlight. So she should not be a noob at her powers. <laughs> you know, she should be pretty well uh, have uh, the absorption of that yellow sunlight to be pretty you know, pretty tough. And it just didn't, in this episode, it felt like they depowered her. I would not want to watch a series based on a Supergirl that was that weak. That just doesn't make sense. So I did not like that part. Here's what they should have done in that helicopter scene, guys. This, they had the opportunity, they could have made it epic. Here's how you make that helicopter scene epic. All right, Livewire is about to throw electricity at the helicopter. She ends up succeeding, hitting the helicopter. The helicopter starts going down. Supergirl rushes up underneath the helicopter with her two bare hands, lifts that helicopter up and holds it in the air, and then slowly lets it down on the ground so the people in it can get out. That is that classic Superman scene. You've all you all know it from the movie, where uh, Lois is in the helicopter on top of the Daily Planet. Uh, it starts falling. Superman rushes up, picks up the helicopter by his hand, and puts it back on the top of the tower. That's so iconic. They could have done that iconic thing right here in this episode. They had the potential. There was the helicopter. All they had to do was get have it zapped by live wire. Supergirl could have flown right up and done the, do, do the iconic lifting of the helicopter and slowly landing it back to the ground thing totally could have done it and then barry would have been like wow barry would have seen the strength that supergirl has and would have been impressed imagine that they had the potential for that scene when i first saw that helicopter i thought they were going to do that and then they chickened out they didn't go far enough that's where they should have gone far enough that should have been epic that scene should have been epic and then the race between um supergirl and the flash should have been epic um so those are my problems with the episode Fix all those things and it would have been an epic show. Now here's the things I liked. The interaction between Kara and Barry, incredible. Uh, I mean, just on point. They have a chemistry you can feel. Their chemistry is real, guys. It's real. (laughs) Um, And you can tell they like doing this. They enjoy the characters. They had fun with what they were doing and working together. And it showed through for us, the audience. We saw the chemistry between them. Their interaction was just perfect. Could not get any better. That's what makes it fun for us. Um, Having the Flash on Supergirl somehow elevated Supergirl because I've seen all the other Supergirl episodes but for some reason this one felt different her, her character felt different in this episode and I think it's the lightheartedness and fun that the flash brought to the episode that elevated Supergirl and made her more fun so I think that's something that they might need to work on on the Supergirl series is make Supergirl more fun you know a little less broody well, she's not really broody, but a little less, you know, this relationship stuff. It's almost like, it's almost as bad as the Arrow with Arrow and Felicity. I, I'm just tired of that stuff. I don't want to see that stuff. Um, I enjoyed all the humor and the one-liners and all the in-jokes in this episode. I mean, they were on point. They were perfect. Um, I couldn't get any better than that. Uh, I enjoyed the two villains. Uh, I think Silver Banshee could have been done a little bit better. The the makeup was kind of lame. Um, I like the two villains. I think they could have upped it, though, and made it a, just a little more epic if they had brought in one of the Kryptonians as well, one of the evil Kryptonians out there. Because they got this whole thing with Myriad going on where they're going to control the people, right? And we learned that at the end. Well, what if one of the Kryptonians came into the picture during this battle and started fighting as well? Then Barry, the Flash, would have to fight a Kryptonian. And then that would be a good way to show their two speeds together. Because imagine um, imagine one of the Kryptonians trying to use his speed to catch up to the Flash and the Flash using his speed to get away. That would have been a good way to 
compare the Flash's speed against the Kryptonian's speed as well, and another way to show that. Beyond just the racing scene, it, that would have been another way to bring in the whole Kryptonian speed versus the Flash's speed force speed. And that could have been him fighting a Kryptonian. And imagine that, him fighting a Kryptonian. That would have been, you know, pretty epic and, and neat to see. So they could have brought that in, which would have livened it up quite a bit, I think. And also filled in some of those moments... Like I said, if you're going to take out the lovey-dovey stuff, you got to fill it in with something else. They could have filled it in with that. That would have been epic. Um, so, basically, uh, again, just as I started this video, in a nutshell, I feel like, just like the Batman vs. Superman movie, there is epicness potential there. But they didn't go far enough. The problem is in the execution. Um, but I still enjoyed the episode. Um, I don't know if it will get new people to watch Supergirl, though, because I think there were too many lovey-dovey problems in there that people just don't want to put up with and don't want to watch. So it, it, it may not be the episode they thought it would be to bring in new Supergirl viewers. But if you're already a Flash fan, you, you're going to watch it just because of the Flash. But if, you're, if you've never watched Supergirl or you're using this episode to determine if you should watch if you, uh, Supergirl or not, I would say don't base the entire series off of this one episode. Uh, the entire series is much different. So uh, don't judge it off of this one episode. I would watch the series. I think it's worth watching. It started off rocky. I'll give Supergirl that. It started off rocky. But we're up to episode 18 now, and I think it is finding its stride. I think much like The Flash, you know, it's going to do a whole lot better in its next season. Um, it's going to be that one of those shows that just takes time to build up. Um, so I'll, I'll wait and see. I mean, I'm going to keep watching it. It's Supergirl. How can I not watch it? You know what I'm saying? Even if I, you know, hated it, I would probably still watch it. But I don't hate it. I find it enjoyable enough to watch. So as long as it's enjoyable enough to watch for me, I'm going to keep enjoying to watch it. Uh, same with the Flash, Arrow, and all the others. Um, so I do look forward to future crossovers. Uh, now that they've done this and they've showed they can cross over networks, I do hope Supergirl comes to the Flash. That would be that would be great to see. Well, anyway, guys, that's kind of my review of episode 18 of Supergirl, World's Finest. That's my opinion. You can agree or disagree with me. I'd like to hear your thoughts about the episode. If you, you know, watch Supergirl or don't watch Supergirl or watch The Flash or don't watch The Flash, if you've seen the episode, I'd love to hear your comments about it as well. Uh, so thank you all for watching this video. And I swear, uh, I, if I keep doing these, I will get a webcam because I know that this is boring staring at my character in a game, hearing just my voice. This is not the way to do this. Uh, I should have a webcam. You should see my face as ugly as it is. Uh, so one day in the future, if I keep doing these, uh, that will be an investment I make. So just uh, be aware of that. I am aware of that particular issue. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for the next one.